Hello, this is Andrew Klein. Today's tutorial takes a look at creating a tire tread inside of Maya. Uh, first off though, I'm going to uh, start off by making a tread pattern inside of Photoshop. I'll bring that into Maya and then I'm going to build my tire tread off of that using a bend deformer. So here's the tire tread that I'm kind of trying to replicate here, uh, at least somewhat loosely just so you can see what I'm aiming for. Uh, I've set up a Photoshop document here and uh, you can see I've just kind of created a pattern through the midsection of it. Uh, using uh, just some of the rectangle tools. Uh, I'm going to get the crop tool and try and crop this down so that uh, it is essentially uh, even from top to bottom here. I'll use my snap features to do this uh, and I'll hit enter to complete my crop operation. Uh, now once I do that you can see I've got a pattern established here that hopefully is um, you know going to be able to be offset off the top and the bottom and I just want to test that ability real quick so let me merge this down and uh, try doing an offset um, so I'm gonna go to uh, filters other offset and uh, after I move the guides here uh, filters other offset and uh, you can see with the vertical slider here I can kind of shift this and if I've designed my tire tread correctly then I should be able to have uh, an even offset and I shouldn't notice any gaps as I offset my way through this. I'm going to bring this back into Maya and uh, I've already set this up as an image plane. Um, it's a little bit big right now so I'm going to shrink it down first and uh, then I'm going to just start building right off of this uh, using this as my design. So I'm just going to shrink it down to a more manageable size. And uh, I'm going to start off by making a cube. You can also make a plane though. And uh, I'm going to draw this out right on top of the image plane. So here's my cube. I'm going to delete off these unneeded faces. And um, right on top of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use the insert edge loop tool to position edge loops uh, on top of the lines that I've already set up. So I'm just using the insert edge loop tool, drawing these lines right to those already drawn out edges. Uh, I'll also use the split polygon tool on some parts here as well. I'm literally just going to try and trace out these black and white forms uh, to the best of my ability. So these edges now have the sort of majority of the verticals and horizontals. I'm going to use the split polygon tool here to draw in these uh, 30 degree diagonals that I have. And hit enter to complete that. I'll use the split polygon tool again here to create this uh, second piece on the lower edge of it. There we go. And so there's those uh, diagonal pieces. And I'm just going to edit the position of these a little bit um, because some of the treads kind of go up and down on just skip ahead to where I've already done that so you can see that I've actually got uh, a little bit of movement here um, along those sweeping up and sweeping down pieces on the edges. Now here's where it uh, gets really interesting. I'm going to select these faces, uh, any of the faces that sort of overlap the white area here. And I'm just doing that by holding down shift and continuously dragging my selection. So there we go, I have all these selected. You can see I have them selected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude these back to create the uh, grooves for the tread. So I extrude. Uh, I can switch this to the local setting on the manipulator. I'm just going to push this back and I've created these tire tread grooves. I'm going to remove off these unnecessary faces on the tops, bottoms, and sides, uh, just because, again, I'm not going to need these on my actual uh, tire itself. So 
So there we go. Now I'm going to go to the side view and I'm going to select all the faces along the front. Just dragging a marquee selection over these. And uh, I'm going to extrude these forward. Right there. And just kind of scale that extrusion in just a little bit. I'm not going to extrude it top down just because I don't want that to uh, take away from my even symmetry. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pivot point and I'm going to move it to the top edge of this. So I'm going to hit insert if I'm on a PC or home if I'm on a Macintosh computer. And using V, holding down V while I have the move tool, I'm going to snap that to the top vertices of this piece. Um, v snap this or vertex snap it. Uh, and then when I'm done, I'll hit either insert or home again, depending on which operating system you're using. Uh, I'm going to remove off all of these faces on the top and bottom that come from the uh, extrusion outwards that I had just a second ago. And once I've completed that, you'll notice my pivot point is here along the top. That's going to allow me to hit control D and just make an even duplicate of this. Move it down. And now if I hold down V, this will snap to the bottom edge of the bottom vertex of the above piece. Uh, just to test this here, let me go ahead and do a mesh combine and then merge my vertices here through that center line. So there we go, that's merged up as a good test. And what I'm going to do here now is skip ahead a little bit because I took that piece uh, and I've been v-snapping these together, essentially making a very long tread out of this. I can just keep duplicating until my tread is complete. So there we go, I've got this big long piece. Uh, I'll take these, I'll combine them, I'll merge these vertices with a merge setting of a .001 just to make sure that uh, only vertices that are right on top of each other merge. So .001, I'll hit apply. And uh, this is now merged up and sort of one long tread object. Well, now we've got to get this tread object and we've got to get it to curl around in a tire shape. And to do that, I'm going to use a bend deformer. So I'm going to select my object and go to the animation menu set. I'm in the polygon menu set currently. I'll go to the animation menu set. I'm going to go to create deformers, nonlinear, and choose bend. So that's uh, animation, create deformers, nonlinear, bend. I've got the channel box open. I'm going to open up my bend deformer. And by using my middle mouse button and sliding this curvature amount, you can see I can bend this strip. And this isn't necessarily the correct angle. So in the channel box, uh, I'm going to rotate this bend deformer in the Y axis. Uh, here's negative 90 degrees. You see that's the wrong way. If I do positive 90 degrees, this will be the correct way when I use the bend deformer. And I'm going to bend this all the way over so that it touches. Now, getting it to touch and getting it to touch perfectly is the tricky part, unless you don't know what you're doing. And um, what I'm looking at here is I get this really, really close. You'll notice that my number of curvature here right now is about 3.2. Now, if you're a little bit thinking ahead here, you might know what's going on, why this is 3.2 and why that looks so close. It's a little bit overlapping right now. And if I go to 3.1, you'll notice that it's you know, a little bit spaced apart. Obviously, the correct number is somewhere in between 3.2 and 3.1. Well, interestingly enough, the actual correct number for this will be pi, 3.14. Um, and you should really kind of be a little bit more specific with it here. So you'll see I've put up a little diagram showing you a little bit about pi. If you want to be extremely specific, you can use these numbers. But I'm going to use 3.14159 or just round that up to 3.1416. And if I plug that in, uh, I'm going to have the proper curvature to round this all the way around and be completely um, seamed up. Um, so I'll just take those vertices uh, at that edge and just merge them together by selecting them and going Edit Mesh Merge under the Polygon menu set. And that will complete the rounding of my tire. Uh, and give me, I think, a very good tire tread that I can use. I can soften my normals or leave them hard, depending on what you need. Uh, and there's a final look at the sort of radial tire belt that I've constructed. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more, please visit KleinMakeLearnGood.com. Thank you.